Hey everyone, I'm Luke from Weld Pro, and today I'm back with the brand new TIG 250 water-cooled model to show you guys how it runs on mild steel. So today I'm gonna clean up a couple eighth inch mild steel plates, and I'm going to do some welds, both fusion and with filler material. If you're just getting started with TIG, fusion welding can help to develop the muscle memory. That way your weld pool is consistent and straight. Once you get fusion welding under control, we can go ahead and add filler material. Before we get started welding today, we're going to sharpen our tungsten. A little tip for sharpening tungsten is to place it in the chuck of a drill. Rotate the drill slowly as the grinder runs. One thing to note, when sharpening tungsten, always keep your tungsten vertical against the wheel. Never sharpen horizontally or you'll place scratches into the tungsten that will cause your arc to wander. Never grind the point of a tungsten more than one and a half times the diameter of the tungsten. If you get too long of a point, you'll get tungsten erosion and a piece of the tungsten may end up in your weld. If you have a little burr on the end of the tungsten, you can touch it to the grinding wheel just to take it off at the very end. Now that our tungsten's sharp, go ahead and reinsert the tungsten into the collet body and tighten down the back cap. Next, let's go ahead and turn on our argon shielding gas. I'm going to crack the valve slowly so as to not shock the regulator or the flow meter. Now we'll go ahead and energize our machine using the power switch on the back. If your water cooler is hooked up correctly, you should hear the fans kick on for both the welder and the cooler. Now that our welder's turned on, let's go ahead and walk through the menu and adjust some of the settings for basic DC TIG. The first thing you'll want to do when setting up the display on the TIG 250 is make sure you're in TIG mode. Just beside the TIG mode indicator, you're going to see the amperage readout. This is indicated by an LED inside of this gray box that tells you what parameter you're adjusting. The large dial in the bottom center of the display is how you adjust your amperage. Ultimately, the amperage is controlled by the foot pedal, so the amperage that you're setting is simply the peak amperage. You can see that as indicated by this LED on the display. There's also a 2T and 4T trigger selection option. This is a locking trigger, but for our purposes, we're going to use 2T. Just to the right of the amperage selector dial is the button that allows you to switch between standard welding and pulse welding. For this DC mild steel, we're going to use standard welding process. The next button on the right is the AC-DC selector. When welding aluminum, you'll be using AC current. For today's purposes, we'll keep it on DC. One of the great new features of the TIG 250 is its ability to save and load presets. The left menu button can be held for three seconds to save a preset. You use the large selector dial below the display to adjust the preset location. To recall a preset, you simply press and hold the right menu button for three seconds, select the preset number you want to load, and press the menu button a second time. I feel pretty good about 120 amps. If it gets too hot, I can simply back off the foot pedal a little bit to reduce the amperage. Now that the menu's set up, I'm gonna go ahead and get started welding. I've cleaned up some eighth inch mild steel plates to lay some passes down. The first one, I'm going to be doing a fusion weld. The second, I'll be adding filler material. It's important to remember that when we're TIG welding, we use a forward or a pushing angle ever so slightly. This ensures that we get gas coverage ahead of our weld pool and over our filler material. When it comes to maintaining a good distance from the base material to the tungsten, keep it as close as you can without touching your base material. Lengthening your arc is likely to increase contamination and heat input. With my tungsten as close to the plate as possible, I'm ready to touch my foot pedal, establish the arc, and begin the weld pool. With your tungsten close to the plate, go ahead and push the foot pedal to establish the arc. Once the arc is established, move forward at a controlled speed with a pushing angle. This forward torch angle is important to make sure that gas coverage is adequate over the weld pool. Take a nice slow pace, keeping an eye on your weld pool. Try and make it consistent the entire way down the pass. Remember that because we're fusion welding, we're not adding filler material at this time. Just take it slow, try and keep your weld pool consistent, and practice these fusion welds. When you're at the end of your pass, extinguish your arc by letting off the foot pedal slowly. Allow the torch to remain over the hot weld pool to allow shielding to occur until it is cool. If you've done everything correctly, your weld should come out looking something like this. 
That fusion weld came out pretty good. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the rhythm of adding filler to the puddle as we travel. Using the same technique of pushing the pedal, go ahead and establish your arc. Once your arc is established, you can go ahead and add filler material. The most important thing to remember when adding filler material is to be consistent and to develop a rhythm. Something you can practice while adding filler material is tying in. Go ahead and pick a point to stop. Slowly extinguish your arc and reignite the arc. Add a little filler to fill in the crater and continue your weld pass. This technique can come in useful if you need to take a break for a second or adjust your position. Don't be intimidated if something happens. Simply stop, fix your filler material or your tungsten, and tie back into the weld again. When you get to the end of your weld, add a couple extra drops of filler material as you slowly extinguish your arc. This will help to fill in and eliminate any crater that would happen. Crater cracking is common, so this is a good technique. All things considered, our filler weld came out pretty good. There's always room for improvement and development of consistency. Hopefully this gives you a little better idea of your travel speed versus how you add filler material. Bead appearance is very dependent upon size of filler, so experiment with different sizes. Hopefully this video gives you a good starting point for TIG welding. If you have any further comments or questions, don't hesitate to leave those below. As always, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Enable your notifications, that way you'll be alerted the minute we release the latest video. Thanks again for watching, and from all of us here at WeldPro, we can't wait to see what you build with your brand new TIG 250.